Okay, so check this out. This is a chart of Bitcoin dominance. It's the percentage of the total crypto market cap that Bitcoin accounts for. It's getting awfully close to 50% dominance, which is the highest it's been since April of 2021. But what does that even mean though? Well, it means that Bitcoin is showing incredible strength and is dominating all the other cryptocurrencies out there. So when I look at that chart, I'm like, dang, is Bitcoin gonna continue steamrolling the altcoins? And if so, should we sell our shit coins to go all in on Bitcoin. Well, today I'm gonna to make the case that yes, we should. And that case really boils down to six key points. Point number one is that the recent banking crisis really proved Bitcoin's worth. It seemed like so many banks were teetering on the edge about to collapse and some of them actually did. Like my very own Silicon Valley bank that I used. Anyways, when all that was going down, I was sure that Bitcoin was gonna drop as well. But lo and behold, it actually went up, which was so surprising to me. I was like, wow, it looks like the general public is finally waking up as to why we need Bitcoin. They realized that every bank is doing fractional reserve. So if a bank run ever happened, none of them would have the money to make their depositors whole. That was a scary realization for a lot of people. And some of them started to look for alternatives, but that turned out to be very challenging because a lot of the options out there are still part of the same centralized financial system. So they had the same risks. Well, except for Bitcoin that is, because Bitcoin is the rare asset that you can truly own and control without relying on any other parties to keep their promises. So that banking crisis really put Bitcoin in the spotlight. It was arguably one of the strongest signs of product market fit that we've ever seen in crypto. So if we're to invest based on product market fit, then most of our portfolio would have to be in Bitcoin. Because let's be honest, most altcoins have little to no product market fit. Anyways, that's just the first reason to go Bitcoin over shitcoins. And my second reason is that Bitcoin's halving is coming soon. So Bitcoin's fourth halving will happen in April of 2024. If you look at history, Bitcoin has always had a pre-halving bull run and a post-having bull run, both going for around 500 days. So right now we have less than 350 days until the next halving, which means that we are already at the eve of the pre-having bull run. Now, I'm not gonna go into why I think the halving causes bull runs because I already did that in a previous video, but just know that if we do get a pre-having bull run, then it'd be a no-brainer to sell your altcoins to go all in on Bitcoin. Because when Bitcoin starts to rocket, it sucks up the liquidity around the crypto markets. So that makes all coins underperform relatively speaking. But also when Bitcoin is rocketing, we often see big pullbacks along the way. So the problem for altcoins is that when Bitcoin rises, altcoins underperform. And when Bitcoin pulls back, altcoins pull back even more. So because of that dynamic, it really makes sense to favor Bitcoin over altcoins as we get closer to the next halving. Now, the reason to favor Bitcoin boils all the way down to the fundamentals. But before we discuss why, I wanna show you this. So this is a hardware wallet, believe it or not and it's made by Tangem, who's also the sponsor of this video. It's a great way to store some of your Bitcoin if you wanna diversify where you keep it. And this isn't like your typical hardware wallet because you don't need a fancy device, cables, and a computer. This is literally just a card with a microchip in it, plus an app on your phone. Tangem has completely reimagined the hardware wallet and I'm all for it. Like no more seed phrases because the private key is on your card. And if you lose that card, you have backups too. It's also protected by an access code to prevent unauthorized access. The chip itself is super secure and they support pretty much every coin out there, not just Bitcoin. So if you wanna learn more, just watch my full review video that I'll link you below. Otherwise, if you wanna buy one, use my code COINSIDER for 10% off. All right, back to reason number three, which is that Bitcoin's fundamentals are stronger than ever before. Just look at this chart. Bitcoin's hash rate is rocketing and is at all time high. That means that Bitcoin's network security is super strong and no one can realistically attack the network. Also, if we look at this chart, we see that miners are continuing to mine more and more, even though they're not making as much profit as before. So what does that mean, right? Well, that means that miners are feeling long-term bullish and they're putting their money where their mouth is. But besides all that mining stuff, we also have this chart of new address growth. This is the number of Bitcoin addresses that have some non-zero amount of Bitcoin in them, and that is starting to grow again. So that tells us that activity is picking up around the Bitcoin network, and that's always good to see. But hold up, because I got two more important charts for you. This one, which shows us that the amount of Bitcoin held on exchanges has been on a downtrend for the first time ever in its history. And if you're wondering where that Bitcoin is going, 
Just look at this chart, which shows us that the amount of Bitcoin that has not moved in over two years. That chart is going up, which means that Bitcoin is moving out of exchanges to people who want to buy and hold for the long haul. All that's to say that there's not a lot of Bitcoin left on exchanges, so even a little bit of buying pressure could move the price up dramatically. So yeah, from a fundamentals perspective, Bitcoin is looking more bullish than ever before, and I bet you can't find an altcoin with better fundamentals than Bitcoin. Now, for reason number four, we're gonna take a completely different angle and point out that all the countries and institutions want Bitcoin, not your favorite shitcoin, right? Like Bitcoin is the one getting put into company treasuries and Bitcoin is the one getting made legal tender. So far, it's only been early adopters like MicroStrategy, Tesla, and El Salvador. But I fully expect to see that trend to continue over the next few years. Like there's a lot of movement across Latin America regarding Bitcoin. And elsewhere, countries like Malta and Japan are starting to increase their Bitcoin focus too. As far as countries buying Bitcoin goes, that's the type of thing I expect to go slowly and then all at once. After all, all the smart countries will realize that the best game theoretic move is to get in early. Because if Bitcoin does become a good hedge against a changing world order, then the ones that get in earlier will reap way more benefits than the ones that come in late. But also in terms of institutions, we're seeing more and more big players from traditional finance come in as well. You got players like Fidelity, KPMG, and NASDAQ all getting involved with Bitcoin in one way or another. And all you gotta know is that they're all supporting Bitcoin, but what about your favorite shitcoin? Probably not. So if you wanna get in ahead of the nation states and institutions, you know, the guys with billions of dollars, then Bitcoin is your only bet. Now, even if you don't buy that argument, this next one may change your mind. And it's the fact that the SEC may kill all the altcoins but leave Bitcoin unharmed. So Gary Gensler, the head of the SEC, has only ever said that Bitcoin is not a security. And it's no secret that he thinks that everything else in crypto is a security, even though he refuses to straight up say that publicly. He's directed his staff to flood the crypto space with enforcement action, not only against the clear scammers, but also against the biggest, most reputable players like Kraken and Coinbase. In their lawsuits, they literally pick a bunch of random tokens and call them securities. So their actions speak louder than words, and it's clear to me how they feel about altcoins. Also, things are only gonna get worse here, as the SEC's Investor Advisory Committee has recommended that they take even more aggressive enforcement action than what they've been doing already. So they're pretty much looking to kill the crypto market in the US, or at least the altcoin projects and exchanges that serve US customers. Maybe we're gonna wake up one day in a world where the only thing that US investors can buy is Bitcoin and everything else will be banned. Which if that does happen, then you'd be an idiot not to get ahead of that and go heavy on Bitcoin. Now, if that's still not enough to convince you, then here's one reason that no one's really expecting but if it happened, it could single-handedly make Bitcoin dominate. And that's the possibility that a spot Bitcoin ETF gets approved sooner than anyone ever imagined. So some Bloomberg analysts explained that the SEC has denied spot Bitcoin ETFs up to this point because the crypto exchanges were not compliant. But now that they're kind of forcing the exchanges to become compliant, then their primary reason for denying spot ETFs will be gone. And that could potentially clear the way for approval. But also, remember that Grayscale is currently suing the SEC for not letting them turn GPTC into an ETF. Well, some analysts say that Grayscale actually has a decent chance of winning, in which case that could also force the SEC to approve a spot Bitcoin ETF. So either way, there are multiple avenues to an unexpected spot ETF for Bitcoin. And just know that if we do end up getting one, then that's gonna send Bitcoin to the moon. So there you go. That's my case from six different angles. And I'm really curious if any of them have you convinced to go Bitcoin over shitcoins. Either way, I'm currently heavy on Bitcoin. And don't forget to check out Tangent Wallet using my link below.